The World Wide Web, the information super highway. The internet is the next man-made creation to revolutionize the world. Instant worldwide communication, new methods of communication, the entirety of human knowledge available in seconds. And that's just what we can do now. Imagine what future generations will do with this power. We used it for porn and racism, and sometimes interracial porn, so so it kind of balanced out? In 1996, however, people much greater than us realised it could be used for a fourth thing, that's hard to say, well, fourth thing, prompting them to make Flash, a piece of software that, among other things, could be used to create and play video games on a web browser. This spawned one of the most iconic parts of gaming in the 2000s, Flash games. Millions of kids would go to IT class, sit at that computer that's facing away from the teacher, type in, uh, no, Newgrounds, and be met with portals to a million worlds, or, in non-virgin terms, links to video games. And none of that lame shit you saw on consoles where you pursued locomotives or whatever, I'm talking pure interactive art. A game where you slaughter terrorists as George Bush, a game where you outrun the cops as a naked Bart Simpson, an RPG where you reenact the Columbine school shootings. Gotta could have done without that one. These sites that hosted them had little to no regulations, allowing basically anyone to upload a game about basically anything. However, while most people loved what was made with Flash, the Flash software itself was pretty heavily criticised, most infamously in 2010 by... Bill Gates? <coughs> Ah, there's always the other one. He announced that upcoming iOS devices would not be supporting Flash, and when asked why, he published a statement subtly hinting at the fact that he might not be fond of it. Flash falls short. Painful experience. One of the worst security records. Has not performed well on the mobile number one reason major Flash falls short. It's a fucking piece of shit! I don't like Flash. Developers hadn't liked Flash due to these reasons for years, but having it phased out by someone as high profile as the creator of Microsoft was the nail in the coffin for it. Over the next few years, Flash was widely replaced with more secure and reliable software like HTML5. In 2017, this culminated in the announcement that Flash support was officially being shut down by the creators themselves, specifically on the last day of 2020. This, by proxy, also meant the death of Flash games. Now, I could do the cliché YouTuber thing here and nostalgically gush about how nostalgic they are, but I think I'll do the other cliché YouTuber thing and tell you why, actually, your opinions are wrong and these games sucked. No, actually, I'm gonna do something somewhere in between. See, in the last few days of 2020, I went on Twitch and live-streamed 7 plus hours of Flash games, partially as a send-off for them and partially to answer the question, were Flash games just nostalgia? So, here are my adult, as unbiased as possible thoughts on some of Flash's most iconic games, including the good and bad impact they've had on the gaming industry. Also, if you want to talk to me and or watch me live, follow me on Twitch. Link is in the description and maybe a pinned comment if I don't forget. Future me, do not fuck this up. Whoa! One of Flash's biggest legacies is games intentionally designed to be difficult. Sure, most arcade games were designed this way so you'd have to put money in more frequently, and there were plenty of games like Crash Bandicoot that were notorious for being hard, but I'd argue Flash games was when we really saw this idea reoccurring as a design philosophy. Crash felt like it just happened to be hard, whereas a ton of Flash games explicitly revolved around difficulty. And by explicit, I mean the world's hardest game. It's a good thing the developer can't read. The world's hardest game is the Dark Souls of Flash games. Although considering it came before Dark Souls, uh, I guess you would say it's... It's the world's hardest game of Flash games. Yeah, you move a square from point A to point B, but die instantly if you touch one of these moving shapes. Part of me wants to say it's a great test of your timing and reflexes, and overall, it's a great game due to its pacing and level variety, but most of me wants to say fuck this game. This shit broke me. It reached a point where, midstream, I got the developer's name, found his LinkedIn profile, and just glared at it for like two minutes. I had one viewer at the time, who left during this moment, so this little bitch didn't just take my sanity, he also took my streaming career. The impossible quiz. It seems the only difficulty Flash developers have 
is reading comprehension. The Impossible Quiz is essentially a parody of quizzes because every answer is a sarcastic one that requires thinking outside of the box. For example, this one where you pick the smaller circle. Like, yeah, I know what a tittle is. I've used Google. And this one where you choose food. Oh, this one's obvious. What? The logic is inconsistent, so there can be some trial and error bullshit, but overall this is a really clever game that deserves its reputation as a classic. Alien Hominid. This is a side-scroller with the brilliant concept that you... Kill humans as an alien. The creator clearly isn't familiar with this obscure term, uh, originality, but they do seem familiar with fantastic game design. It's fast paced, the controls are smooth, the art style is distinct as hell. Not as good as mine, but not bad, and most notably, it absolutely demolished me. So yeah, I would love this challenge, but then I remember I'm technically a game journalist, so shouldn't have made it so hard, bitch. 3 out of 10. Winnie the Pooh's Home Run Derby, a baseball game based on Winnie the Pooh. Hear me out here. So this was recommended to me live by a follower of mine, Zorg Bravle? Bravla? Bra Brav? By an undisclosed follower of mine. So I thought, oh okay, they obviously want me to play a childhood favourite of theirs or something. So I honestly went into it expecting some unremarkable kids game. So I started playing, and I was really struggling. I could rarely hit the ball, and when I did, it was often a foul ball. It was at this point Zorg the Bitch revealed to me that this isn't a childhood favourite of theirs, but a game that became a meme for its extreme difficulty. There was unironically a speedrunning community around this game. Why do I struggle to get 5,000 subscribers, but Winnie the Pooh's Home Run Derby gets a cult? It's a simple game on its surface, you essentially just swing the bat at the right time, but the timing is so specific, it feels like it's down to luck most of the time. You can hypothetically make this easier by improving your stats with stat points you get for progressing, but like an amateur prostitute that can't get work, you can't improve if you can't hit the damn balls! Considering this is aimed at such a young audience, this definitely seems like this is hard due to bad design rather than being by design, but either way, fuck Zorg. Meek Boy, a nickname all the ladies have called me. <laughs> because I have poor qualifications, so can only get a low end job selling meat. I can't even pay my gas bills, I'm so fucking depressed. This is a 2D platformer and a fairly unique one at that, as it's actually in a vertical screen ratio, so consequently features very vertical level design. You combine this with the very loose platforming controls, and you have one of the most punishing platformers of its time. This combination may sound frustrating, but actually, its compact levels and relatively complex momentum physics create an amazing, just one more go, dynamic. There's never been a Flash game review with this many syllables in before, so I'm gonna move on now, but yeah, it good. So good, in fact, that it received an immensely popular sequel on consoles called Super Meat Boy. This was available through digital storefronts like Steam and Xbox Live Arcade, and the huge success of it catapulted indie gaming to the popularity it has now, while also proving the viability of digital purchases on consoles at such an early stage. This leads us to our next section. Whoa! Another huge impact Flash games had was the popularization of social and multiplayer games. While multiplayer had been popular on PC for a while due to games like Doom and Quake, and was rising in popularity on consoles due to the success of games like Halo, multiplayer was still fairly inaccessible to mainstream audiences. Remember, this was the 2000s, a time when it was easier to shoot up a school than it was to download a video. And well, that's still kind of the case, actually. Flash games, though, weren't as demanding in this regard due to their simplicity, thus making multiplayer playable for broke people like this fucker. And in walking this line of advantage and limitation, Flash games pioneered some of the most creative takes on the multiplayer medium, such as chat rooms that were simultaneously video games. For example, Habbo Hotel. Yeah. Ah! I wear my cap backwards! Rewind time to 2008 Couldn't find dying candies all I ate But what I did have was a laptop 8 GB with Wi-Fi so online I'd play Age 10 was spent playing Habbo Hotel 
Building rooms and fucking hoes. Twelve, I can make panties fall, but prefer falling funny. Wrestling roleplay, always top of the tourney. What? Buying HC with my mum's credit card is the way. RIP, VIP, builders club ain't the same. Pedo claims, fortune rates, in the pool with the AIDS. Kill Hebble for a flash, but I still love it anyway. Oh, until that girl who told me, oh, Colonel? You can rot in hell. What? Club Penguin rewritten, a furry simulator where you talk and play games with people. The original Club Penguin actually shut down in 2017, so rewritten is a fan-made remake. My favourite part about this is the fact they had to use CP in the URL to avoid copyright infringement. Using Club Penguin in-game? Totally fine. Literally recreating the entire game? Totally fine. Putting this combination of letters in the URL? Now you fucked up. Probably shouldn't have gone with CP though, considering that's the official police acronym for child pornography. Especially since you're, you know, a kid's game. Sign up your kid for child porn rewritten. Not a good luck fam. What do I think of the game though? Well, I couldn't get into it. I know, I know, British YouTuber shits on beloved kids game. I've become the very stereotype I've always thought, but yeah, it just felt too basic for me, honestly. I've always liked Habbo because of how alive everything is. Most of the rooms are user built, so there's a ton of variety. There's loads of active furniture, like in room mini games, and these complex wiring systems you can use to make furniture move and light up. Club Penguin just feels kind of bare bones and repetitive by comparison. Also, no one would talk to me, for some reason. I did break into someone's igloo and threaten to kick their animal, that was fun, and the general aesthetic of the game is so cosy. Playing this felt really nostalgic, despite me only ever playing the game like twice as a kid, I, I totally see the appeal here, but it just didn't click for me unfortunately. Happy Wheels. As a YouTuber, just hearing that name makes me want to put my hands on my cheeks and open my mouth. This was one of the earliest games to go viral on YouTube. It's fundamentally a 2D platformer where you shift your weight and use momentum to pass obstacles and reach the finish line. However, this became so iconic because most of the levels were made by other players. The end result was chaos. Oh fuck, oh, I'm not ready! Okay, well, okay, wait, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. So, oh, wait. Oh, oh shit. Ah! Get me out of here, get me out of here. Get out of the room. Get oh shit, Jesus! Oh, this is rough. Oh. Oh. Oh fuck, don't do that, this is interesting. Oh, okay then. Oh shit, oh, oh fuck, I got cramp, Jesus. Ah! Shit. Jesus, man. Yes, the kid died, yes. Farmville, a huge game on Facebook where you simulate farming while being spammed with invites from 59-year-old soccer moms. Last time I mentioned this game, I broke out in a country song. What could possibly go wrong this time? God damn it. The success of Flash games caused big companies to take notice and start producing Flash games themselves. Most of these were lazy games made in a week just to promote an upcoming product. Predictably though, some saw the Flash format as a money-making opportunity. In this case, Farmville was a game that was free to play, but very slow to progress in unless you paid real-world money. Due to Facebook exclusively consisting of gullible 59-year-old soccer moms, the game became Facebook's biggest and thus this monetization scheme was proven to be effective, thus remaining a problematic part of the industry to this day. Most notably in mobile games where the main dynamic is literally not playing the game until a meter runs out. In that powerful hip-hop anthem I just spit, I mentioned buying things in Habbo with my mum's credit card, and that's because a lot of social games like this and Club Penguin were also rife with microtransactions. Not in the overt, fuck off until this meter empty style, I guess we finally found some developers who know the meaning of this word, but in a very meta way. In Habbo's case, it's technically free to play because there's a free currency you can get in the game, but all that currency gets you is trash like this. The only way to get things that can actually attract bitches is to pay real money. Of course, this too persists in modern gaming. However, despite the magical world of capitalism skewing this medium to a darker place, the majority of Flash games remained uncorrupted, innovative efforts. That brings us to our last section. Whoa! 
Another huge thing Flash games pioneered is games designed around physics. Now sure, most games have physics to play an integral part in the gameplay, there's entire genres built around this, but likely because most Flash games were made by new developers just playing around with what they could do, many Flash games toyed with physics as a central gameplay mechanic, something that we now see a lot of in games like Angry Birds and Goat Simulator. For example, Quop. Like Happy Wheels, this was one of the earliest games to go viral on YouTube. The keyboard letters Q, W, O and P control different ligaments of your legs, which you use to reach the finish line at, at the, the Olympics for some reason. It sounds simple, but it's excruciating in execution. This is a visual representation of my life at birth and how it's going. On top of the controls, its difficulty also derived from the physics, as much of the challenge was trying to gain momentum, shift your balance, move the right ligament at the right time to shift that momentum, and so on. It's one of the most deceptively intricate games I've played, such a satisfying learning curve. Like yeah, sex is great, but have you ran in co-op so well it started playing the success music? Portal the Flash version. Is this legal? I don't think so, but what I do know is that this is a great 2D adaptation of the actual portal. You put one portal down, put another somewhere else, go into one to come out the other, then use that momentum and portal placement to progress. It makes you analyse your surroundings, think ahead and just generally features a diverse lineup of clever puzzle platforming challenges. Emphasis on challenges because wow, I sucked ass at this. To be fair though, you can't expect more than that from me because remember, I'm technically a game journalist so I don't have much experience with games. Duck Life 3 Evolution. I'm guessing you do need to play the first two to understand this, because what the fuck am I looking at right now? There's five mini games here, four training ones to build your stats, and then a race that the training is for. In flying, you avoid hitting the rocks while collecting purple circles. Considering ducks can't fly, my fan theory is that these purple circles are drugs, and that what we're seeing is this duck popping pills as he hallucinates a life he can't have. But other than that, it's basically a fast paced, easier Flappy Bird than years before Flappy Bird. It's not bad. In running, you click to make the duck jump at the right time to avoid incoming objects like giant baseballs and watermelons. Yeah, this duck is ODing, isn't it? It's fairly challenging, I liked it a lot. That brings us to climbing. After ODing, the duck dies and ascends to heaven, so we have to press left and right to avoid the rocks so we can get there. It's a bit too easy, but otherwise yeah, it's another great test of your reflexes. And finally, swimming. The duck falls down from heaven into a nearby river, so you have to jump over and swim under obstacles to reach the end of the stream safely. A pretty novel take on the 2D platformer genre, and definitely the deepest game of the four. Another phenomenal effort. This game is great. But like I said, these four training games were all building towards a final, epic gauntlet. The race, where all of your skills are put to the test in one grand spectacle. No, actually you just watched the computer play for you. Seriously, you don't even play the race, you just watch a computer play for you and it wins or loses based on the stats you've built up in training. This is such a missed opportunity in my opinion. It's not that big of a deal because ultimately this is still a compilation of four fantastic games but wow. If I teabagged blue paint, my balls still wouldn't be as blue as they were here. Max Dirt Bike. I'm positive one of the requirements to become a Flash developer is to be really into motorbikes, because like three quarters of Flash games revolved around you balancing a dirt bike over obstacles. That's for a reason though, because these games are fun as hell. Easy to pick up, but due to the focus on physics, actually packing a fair amount of depth for those seeking replay value, as there's a ton of nuances you don't catch the first time around, like the ability to and how to do a flip. The physics did glitch out from time to time, this is me when my crush asks are you flexible, but overall, there's a reason this was one of my most played games as a kid. Whoa! So in conclusion, are Flash games just nostalgia? I don't think so, no. I never played most of these games before and I still loved my time with them. They're just legitimately well designed games. The difficulty based games are hard because of clever level design and mechanics, not because of cheap gimmicks. This bitch is still a bitch though. The physics based games have a surprising level of depth to them, perfectly capturing that easy to play, hard to master dynamic. 
And of course, there's the millions of games I couldn't even fit into this video because of how distinct they are. Boxhead, a top-down shooting game where you fend off creatures in the labyrinth with weapons and clever movement that features one of the most satisfying risk-reward systems I've seen in a game, with its multiplier that rises and depletes based on how many kills you can chain together in rapid succession. So many words! Bloxos, a puzzle game designed for kids that I still can't beat as an adult. Use Boxmen, a puzzle platformer where you clone yourself to hit switches and boost yourself across chasms to progress. There's an endless supply of inspired design here. And even when the design was a little amateurish because, you know, the game was made by an amateur, they were still a blast because of how damn creative they were. For example, the Henry Stickman games. These are some of the most beloved Flash games, so again, apologies for being cliche British YouTuber who shits on childhood favourites, but in my opinion, the design of these games is ass. So, you put in a scenario where you have to pick an option to progress. For example, which tool do you use to break into this building? One is successful, all the others fail. There is absolutely no way to tell which is correct. You just guess. So the entire game is just luck based. I found this frustrating at first, but the more I played them, the more I was won over by its imagination and charm. Tunneling underground, only to drop onto underground train tracks. Exploding your way into a building with a creeper from Minecraft accidentally breaking a pterodactyl out of his egg in a museum while you battle the security guards, causing a chaos containment unit to kill you all with a nuke from Modern Warfare 2. So, even when the game isn't some deep, decision-making masterpiece, it's still a joy because you're instead playing to experience the batshit mind of its creator. Very few console games have such an electric and organic personality because they're not made by some kid for fun in his bedroom, but by hundreds of slaves in a sweatshop. I feel there's some sort of commentary that can be tied to YouTube here, but this is getting too cynical even for my British ass, so moving on. That's why the death of Flash games is so sad, because it marks the death of gaming's most innocent and authentic side. And this level of individuality to the art form is really important. Towards the start, I mentioned an RPG that simulated the Columbine school shootings, a game that obviously was only able to exist due to the creative freedom of Flash websites. Because of its intriguing premise, this game spawned a huge debate. 59-year-old Sacramams argued it was proof games cause violence. Some argued it brought light to the issue of school shootings. And just in general, it spawned such a rich discussion of the medium. Of gaming as an art form, of entertainment as a form of social commentary. It created a dialogue about the media's use of gaming as a scapegoat. This is what the best forms of art are about thought-provoking expression. But you don't get that if you don't take risks. And you don't take risks if you're a $50 billion corporation scared you might become a $49 billion corporation. But even with this era gone, the legacy of Flash games is very much still alive. The gameplay styles they pioneered like the difficulty, social and physics focus, the huge part they played in popularising indie gaming and killing the concept that these are somehow lesser experiences than their AAA peers, the obvious impact it had on mobile gaming. Gaming is a better industry because Flash was in it and even with some people using it to leave a darker legacy, there's a reason beyond nostalgia why so many will always remember Flash.